Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have with us Nick Bohr, who's the founder and CEO of Inspire Wealth. Nick, welcome to the program. Thanks, Mike. I uh, appreciate you guys having me on. Hey, you're welcome. And um, I always like to kind of start off with, um, you know, hey, give me a little background or, oh, hey, I love the name of your company. And I really love the Inspire Your Retirement, Inspire Wealth, because it, you don't think that people would need inspiration for wealth, but many times you need to inspire people to take those proper steps well ahead of when they need that wealth and plan for retirement. So I'm excited to learn about your approach to working with your clients, but what has your um, entrepreneurial journey been like to this point in your career? Uh, it's, uh, you know, like I know a lot of entrepreneurs, there's been a lot of ups and downs. Yep. Um, you know, I've been in the industry 20 years. Uh, I spent uh, I spent the early part of my career with big uh, big corporations, big firms, and uh, you know realizing the good and the bad and the indifferent, and, and realizing what I really wanted to be able to bring to my clients and be able to offer them a, a, a different feeling and being able to truly be that full service financial planning firm that uh, a lot of uh, mid to higher end white collar clients need. Yep. Yeah, kind of. It kind of uh, gives me the impression of you know, just be real and authentic. Just treat people like they need to be treated. Don't use highfalutin words. Just kind of talk to them and help them understand. Because if you try to talk too uh, above the intellect of people, you're just confusing them. So just you want to retire, you want this. Let's talk about that because in in essence, don't you find that you as a financial and wealth uh, planner find that you are really doing some life planning for clients because it's not a matter of let's cr grow your portfolio by doing this. Many times you're saying, what do you want? What does the retirement look like for you? And then you start backing into, if you want to achieve this, now we need to do these things. So I think that's a really neat uh, distinction as well. For sure, Mike. And I, I, I'll, I'll go, uh, I'll kind of, you know, go above of what you just said as far as what do, what do you want your retirement to look like? And that's a big reason why, um, you know, when, when I created Inspire Well, um, it really meant something to me because, again, you know, we want to – our objective and our goal is to be able to instill confidence in our clients – to feel that they can live that retirement they want, that yeah. they're not living day by day. And, you know, we have a lot of clients that come in that are just afraid to spend their money because I, what if I, what if I need it for this? What if I yeah. have a health care issue? And, and I will tell you, that's a big reason why over and above the name Inspire Wealth, that's also the reason why when I, uh, you know, when I chose the domain Inspire Your Retirement for the website, as well as the tagline, inspire your today, plan your tomorrow. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's really, it's, as you said, sometimes clients need that little, okay, well, I know I just need to save, but what, what am I, what is that tied to? What am I, how much do I need to save? Why am I saving? Is it because, well, I just want a comfortable retirement, but what does that mean? Yeah, and you know, it makes me think of this too, Nick, and, and I think that in personal development, we're all told to set goals and, you know, set, um, you know, the BHAG, the big, hairy, audacious goal and, and push goals and stretch goals. Well, I feel like if you set too big of a goal, you feel uninspired because it's like, I can never attain that. So you need to set goals that are attainable that actually motivate you and draw you toward them. So with being inspired today, you need to be having that re retirement picture painted in your mind so clearly that it draws you to it to go, ooh, if that's where I want to be, and I need Nick said I need to do this and this and this by this age or whatever the case is, you you're drawn to that. You're not pushed. It's not like all right, Nick, I'm going to do it. Fine. You're drawn and motivated because of the picture you've created. Because each retirement picture would be different because everyone's a different person. Well, for sure, and you know, I'll 
I'll share a little bit of a, of a personal story uh, from, from my end personally. Um, you know, it, it's, you know, it's a follow up to, you know, making sure what do you, what do you want your retirement to be? What do you envision it? How do you want to spend it? Meaning example, do you want to be able to be in a position to take your grandkids to, to Disney for the first two, you know, first two or three big trips they go on so that you, you can create memories with them. Do you want to have, uh, whether it's a primary home or a second home on, on the water somewhere, whether it's on a lake or on an ocean, so that you have that place where the kids and grandkids come vacation and want to spend time with you. Do you want to be able to, to have that RV where you can travel around and do the things you want to do? Whatever that looks like, my, my feeling is, is that I want to help you show you how we can achieve that. And, and, and my personal story, you know, I, I lost my dad about six, six and a half years ago now um, at only the age of 66. Wow. And I, I, I will tell you that one of the things that really hit home for me, uh, you know, when, when he passed was he had just retired about four or five years prior and, you know, he had always wanted um, a home on a lake and he had never, he had never gotten it. You know, mm-hmm. my mom and him, you know, had never jumped in, into that, uh, into that next phase where they were like, yeah, let's get a place on a lake. And that is one of the things that our family has done at this point is, is we do have a cottage up north. And that's a big reason because we want to be able to, to create and fulfill those memories that my dad envisioned that yep. was never able to, to get fulfilled. Yeah. Well, you know, that, that just brings up the big L word in my mind, legacy. And whether it's the legacy yeah. of a memory or legacy of being able to have financial stability, all those things, that's just so neat because you're like, you know what? Uh, here's a legacy I'm going to carry on in my dad's memory, honor. Now, maybe your kids, when they grow up, that's just going to be ingrained in their mind. You know, my I live in Colorado, and my uh, wife and kids and I, we've got a place up in the mountains, and we ride ATVs and hike and, you know, kayak and all that. And it's like, you know what? Um, our kids have have memories for their for 18 to 20 years of heading up to the cabin, and that's a big legacy. But you know what? You If you don't have that right this minute, if you don't have that picture in your mind of where, what you would like at retirement or even now, that's, that's what a good – um, retirement focus can do. And it brings me to a question that I think a lot of people might even have fuzzy in their mind. You know, you, you, people in your industry are called investment advisors, financial planners, you know, certified financial planners, retirement, wealth advice. What's the difference in all those? And what actually are you guys? What do you focus on? So, you know, our, our, our so, so two things. Number one, our, our focus is we are a full service financial planning firm. And I'll, I'll explain a little bit of, of what does that really mean and why I, it was so important to me when I created Inspire Wealth to be able to offer that full service approach. There has been, uh, you know, I've known a lot of advisors that I would consider friends, that I would consider associates, and that I've also, you know, in, in encountered through clients that um, portray themselves, as you said, either as certified financial planners or investment advisors, financial professionals so many different acronyms and titles. And I'm going to say probably about 80 or 90% of the time, what I find is those that most of the people that are doing that financial advisor type work are truly just helping the client manage their assets. So they're yeah. being that investment or that asset manager. And It's not that there's anything wrong with that because a lot of advisors do a really good job helping clients accumulate their wealth as they're working. And I think we can all understand, especially recently with some of the volatility we've seen in the market, as you transition into retirement and and go into what I'll call the second half of the game or second half of life, it's what your goals and objectives should be are a lot different than in the first half. The first half, you're just accumulating, you're growing, you're just trying to make sure that you have enough in your mind that you're okay. And in the, in the back half, you're looking at things like, how do I minimize taxes? How do I make sure I have enough income coming in every month? And what am I paying in taxes on that? Do I have a pension? 
How do I optimize or, set or maximize Social Security? Um, how do I make sure that that legacy or wealth transfer piece, if and when I don't spend all my money and I want to trans transition it to my kids or my grandkids or charities, how do I do that in the most tax efficient way? Um, if I own a business, how do I make sure I can exit my business in the most efficient way? Do I need to offer executive benefits? Do I need to offer things over and above traditional benefits, whether it's retirement plans, whether it's health insurance? All of those things to us at Inspire Wealth are pieces of the financial planning bucket per se, you know, and, 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 you know, the, the legacy or the wealth transfer, a lot of people would refer to as estate planning, you know, a char charitable or, ch or charitable planning uh, would also be lumped into that. If you are charitably inclined uh, retirement income is, 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 you know, making sure you have enough income. We have, I've done a, I've done a really thorough job over my 20 year career, just north of two decades now that I've, I've made connections. I've learned, I've learned through trial and error. I've done a lot of research on um, investment firms and on who's good at different areas. So that now that we're at the point where we are, I feel like I've done a really good job cutting through the red tape and making sure that when a client comes in, and, and I say client, a new prospective client, however they were, you know, they were introduced to us, and they need that full gamut of planning that I'm not going to try to be the jack of all trades but I have the people in place. I have the team behind me that are made up of CPAs, attorneys, tax experts for business owners, um, payroll people if you own a business, voluntary benefits people, I, I, group benefits people. I, I'm not gonna pretend that I'm gonna be the expert in all those areas. I will, however, say that I feel it's so important for that client to feel comfortable knowing that they truly have that boutique financial planning firm feel that we have that team in place that can really handle every concern and every area that they would need to focus on. And, and that takes more than what you said uh, at the beginning of that question, which is, oh, we manage your money. You know, that takes much more than that because you need to know how each element of all of those impact the other. And like you said, if you try to be the yeah. expert in all of them, forget about it. But if you don't realize that this move impacts taxes, which impacts business, which impacts, then you could have a house of cards falling. So you need to have that holistic approach. For sure. And, and you know, and, and I'll, use a, I'll use an example. So if, if, you are, if you are a business owner and you're looking to exit your business, do, do you know the best way to sell your business from a tax yeah. perspective? You know, has, has your CPA or has your financial planning firm talked about things like an installment sale? Or have they talked about, if you own real estate, have they talked about things like, well, do you understand what Delaware statutory trusts are? You, you, most people in real estate, they understand what, the, what, what a 1031 exchange may be, but they may not fully understand what all the strategies to help reduce or spread out those taxes that you could really take advantage of. And if you're not that full service planning firm that has the experts in the right area, are you really going to be able to bring those strategies for the right client for the right situation? Yep. Right. And, and that means that you better have as, as you know, the company as a, and as a client, you better choose a financial planning wealth advising company that has that team approach and, Maybe, maybe this is a question for you, Nick. If someone is the, you know, the the CEO of a financial uh, planning firm, if they say, I, I've got it covered, I will take care of everything, and they're not talking about a team or they're not talking about strategic advisors within the, the you know, the confines of that uh, organization, if they're trying to tell you that they're going to handle it all themselves, 
you might not be getting the most personalized and really laser targeted advice. So the importance of those key advisors um, to help you, whether you're a business owner or not, like your example of exiting a business, great, but you just may be a, a you know, well-to-do family that you need to have many elements of wealth building and wealth preservation to then pass on that legacy. And having that team is really, really important. For sure, for sure. There's no, there's no question about it. And I will tell you, part of the reason why um, part of my team uh, is, uh, you know, is the, is the registered investment advisory firm that I, that I work through uh, on the investment side. You know, we, we, we custody assets with Charles Schwab. Uh, but I will say an important piece is my RIA. And the reason why is because they operate like I do, meaning they're trying to be that boutique yeah. planning firm, that boutique investment firm that is going to have a lot of those resources. So if a client comes in and they have a big gain on several non-qualified assets, we will actually help them create what we call a customized tax transition plan. And, and, and to some to some clients, they're like, what the heck does that even mean? Like, can, like, help me understand that. And it's, well, you know what? Let's make sure we loop your CPA in. Let's make sure what are you going to pay in capital gains if we're liquidating X amount this year versus next year? Let's actually create that custom tailored tax transition plan. How much of your portfolio is going to be tax free? Do you have any Roth? Do you have any other strategies that are tax-free outside of Roth? How do we make sure that if, if creating or transitioning that multi-generational wealth is important, how do we do that in the most efficient way? And that's why, Mike, you know, I say it's so important to have a lot of your team on the same page. Yeah. And, 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 it, and it, it's, it's just crucial. Yeah, um, also, I'll bet you through that uh, example of, you know, how much of your wealth will be and do you have this cover? Some of those considerations require that you would make recommendations to a client that maybe you and your firm don't even get a monetary benefit from, but it's the right thing for the client. So I think that a lot of firms just go, oh, we'll, we'll take care of you. We'll treat you right. But what are some of the protocols in place that a client would go, you know what, Nick, is going to do that. I trust him, but also he must do that. You're uh, you're absolutely right. There is a there is a lot of things that we recommend or that we position as a firm that is just the right thing to do for the client, but we don't get monetary value for that. I mean, there's yeah. it's I can't even I can't even the list is endless. Um, to give you a couple examples, um, I'll be the first to say we don't really do group benefits, meaning we don't do health insurance, we don't do dental, vision, yeah. those types of things. Are we licensed to do them? Sure. But again, because we're not trying to be the jack of all trades, yeah. we have specialty firms that all they really do is group benefits. Yep. We have a few that we recommend because we vetted them, because we trust them. They've done good work for our clients. It's that type of, of relationship is so important. Just like, you know, for them, you know, that, that firm that does group benefits, they may not be experts in retirement plans right. or in executive benefit planning or creating tax strategies for the executive team. That's where our team comes into play and our team behind us will help create specific strategies for that business and for the executives that fit what they're looking for and what's best for them. Yep. And it even goes beyond just the old good old boy, I'll treat you right. Being a fiduciary in your industry means you're obligated and really required by law to do that. And if if you kind of guide people in the wrong direction, it could come back on you guys. So you're motivated by great ethics and, you know, good good business principles, but also you're regulated. And that's another big benefit that a potential client needs to understand about working with your firm, right? For sure, for sure, and that's that, that, that term fiduciary has been thrown out, yeah. and it's been thrown around a lot, probably over the last, I'll say, five to ten years, and it's it's really become, it should be one of your first questions. And I say this, we 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 host workshops, 
we do group presentation events, and that's one of the things I kind of give everyone. I say, look, there's two or three questions that you should be asking any firm that you're kind of interviewing as potentially being that planning firm or investment firm that you're going to work with. And, and one is always, are you a fiduciary? That is always one of the first questions. Another one is, do you understand the difference between retail investing or institutional investing? And do you understand what the value could be for you? And I always portray, look, you know, we do institutional investing for our clients. That's important for you to know. And what is the difference? You know, and, and, and as well as are you a full service financial planning firm? Meaning, do you do tax planning? That's a big piece we're getting a lot of feedback from a lot of potential clients or a lot of existing clients that are concerned about future taxes. You know, that everyone knows the tax bracket sunset in 26 if there's no law changes, but with the death the way it is, what's there to say that the taxes won't go up even more after that? Yeah. And you need, to be, you need to be planning for that. There's so many people that come in the door when they first meet with us and 80 or 90% of their assets is in pre-tax 401ks or IRAs. And then when you explain to them, <clears throat> okay, so what does that mean? H how does that look for retirement? How much is gonna be taxable? And, and most people have that feeling of, well, I'm gonna be in a lower tax bracket when I retire because my income's gonna be less. Yes, you could be, but when we get to required minimum distribution age at 72 now, could that push you up into the next tax bracket? And when you yeah. actually lay it out for some clients, you know, we get the deer in headlights look. They're like, why did I never think of this? Well, why and also, my do, you think taxes, ever explain? do you think taxes are going to go up or down in the next five to 10 years? Nobody knows, but I, I yes. checked the box up. <laughs> I for would sure. think they're, they're going to sure. inch up a little bit. So that's a that's another really great point. Yeah, really good. I mean, there's just so many things that people – the deer in the headlights, I think that is a really great way to explain it because, you know, I think that people just don't know what they don't know. And when they start being shown and taught, you know, all the considerations, it's like – this is vast and, and it must be done to optimize and make sure that everything's done the right way. So I um, also understand we'll just kind of wrap up with this. You, you guys are launching a podcast. Tell us a little bit about what that is going to be all about. So, you know, really, we just want to launch a, a podcast to be able to have um, to have guests on, on, on our podcast talk about what we're doing, what's, uh, what, what things people should be thinking about in their financial lives at certain points, at different ages, what's going on with current uh, economy, uh, what's, what, what's different from some of the things we've talked about today. How is an advisor different from a financial planner? How is a, an investment manager different from this? And, and making sure that they do know the questions to ask and making sure that the firm they're going to work with is going to be there when they need them. Yeah. So all of those things are, are, are going to be talked about. And, um, you know, I think it's really important in today's world to make sure you're getting good, sound information out there because we all know there's good and bad information. And I, I've learned over the years that I want to make sure that my clients and prospective clients know that we practice what we preach and that we're always going to be there to make sure we're, we're, we're there for them and to help them. 100%. Well, listen, Nick, uh, if someone's listening to this going, I need to learn a little bit more, what's the best way they can reach out and connect with you guys? Uh, the best way is, uh, you know, is our, is our website and in, uh, inspire your retirement is, is one. There's a, a ton of information on there. One of the other ways is uh, we actually uh, just created a, a link tree account. Um, and I don't know if any, how familiar everyone is with Linktree, but uh, it's Linktree slash Inspire Wealth. It's got everything on there you could want. So anything from access to our website, all of our socials. It's got a 45-second welcome video. It's got putting in some info to create their financial wellness score. A lot of good stuff on there that's kind of one stop, one link, and everything's there. Awesome. Very good. Well, thank you so much for coming on. It's a real pleasure to talk with you today, Nick. Appreciate it, Mike. I appreciate you uh, for the, uh, the, the invite, and uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully the listeners uh, learn some info today. Awesome. Thank you so much.
You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.